Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I decided to make a short video series on building the Wolverine amplifier. Uh, the reason for this is it's a slightly more complex amplifier than some of the other amps on the DIY audio forum. Um, but having said that, it has very high performance. So at this point in time, some people have ordered boards and they're probably waiting to get those excellent PCBs in the post. Um, however, quite a few people have now got access to the Wolverine build guide. And the intention of this video is to just sort of set a bit of context for the project and go through a little bit of the build guide and um, we'll uh, hopefully be able to build this excellent amplifier as a group. Um, hopefully you guys can follow on and perhaps subscribe to the video series. I intend to keep the videos quite short. Uh, just everyone's, you know, everyone's conscious of time these days. And maybe, you know, five-minute videos are quick and easy to watch. And, um, you know, perhaps interesting if you're planning to build this amplifier. Okay, so let's continue. So here's the build guide. Um, at the start, you get a little bit of history about... Uh, uh, the Honey Badger amplifier, and this is, um, you know, a, a, I would say higher performance version or a, or the next iteration of that sort of style of amplifier in that it's a high performance class AB amp. Um, this amp has a lot of attention to detail, and as we go through some of the build, we'll probably be able to, you know, uh, experience some of the design ideas that have gone into this and the uh, extra efforts by the, the group of guys who've uh, worked on this. Uh, I'm really looking forward to building it. Um, but let's go a little bit further. So you can see, you know, there's quite detailed instructions through here. You know, um, you know, it talks about assembly of the heat sinks, uh, the driver heat sinks. Gives you uh, quite uh, in depth information about. The board um, selection of the feedback type TPC or TNC. Now I'll go a little bit further. You know, mounting driver head transistors to the heatsink. Uh, you know whereabouts the VBE transistor can be mounted, so you can mount it on the heatsink directly on one of the power transistors, or um, you know you can mount it to the side, up, down, roundabout. Anyhow, the point is, if, if, from my point of view, um, in this case, it's uh, there's two main options. You can mount it to the PCB. Sorry, we're starting again. Mount it to the main heatsink, or you can mount it to the uh, one of the output transistors. I think it, you'll find if you mount it to one of the output transistors, it has a faster response to thermal change um, because there is a little bit of... Um, thermal resistance between the transistor and the heatsink, uh, whereas if you're directly on top of the output transistor case, you might you may find uh, that it has a slightly faster response to any thermal change. Anyway, let's move on. So there's the output transistor mounting detail. Uh, you know, go a bit further. So one thing, uh, this amp can be built in one of the lovely cases from the DIY audio store. So what you'll find is um, if you build the three output pair version like this, it will fit on one solid heating. Uh, if you build the four output pair version, which is what I've planned to do, you really need to go to a uh, 400 mil deep chassis, which then has two 200 mil heat sinks. So uh, that's what I've chosen. I like to have fairly robust output stages. That's why I've chosen four output pairs. Um, I have ordered one of the deluxe five unit aluminium chassis from the DIY audio store. Unfortunately, they're quite expensive, but um, I think this particular amplifier project is well worth it. So there's some of the drilling holes. I'll go into this in more depth as the project moves on, but just this is a quick overview to set the scene. Um, here's the circuit. 
Um, so as you can see, it's it's not. I mean, there's a lot of amps out there that are very simplistic. This has got a lot of care taken, a lot of attention to detail. As you can see, the front end, uh, it is a differential pair, cascaded with a current mirror, with a helper transistor. You've got uh, CFP current sources. Hope I'm using the right terminology here. Followed by the voltage amplification stage, which is, uh, you can call it a Darlington or an EF VAS. Uh, and the reason for this transistor here is it uh, breaks the, let's say, um, Miller effect between this part of the circuit and here, because this uh, is essentially um, reduces the Miller effect to reduce distortion. I won't go too deep into it, but that's the that's the broad reason. So we'll go a bit further. So capacitance multipliers on the rails in between the high power side of the amplifier and the input stage. Uh, here's the uh, VBE multiplier. Um, this is the four output pair version in this picture here, you can see. So when we talk about EF3, the emitter followers, here, here they are, here's one, two, and three, uh, and they are driving this output stage here. So there's quite a lot of attention to detail in this output stage in that um, lots of small tweaks have been applied and you'll see more of those as we go through so we'll just scroll down a bit there's a little bit of information here about fault finding um you know and a few basic measurement practices at the end of the document so having said all this i will wrap this video up but i'm looking forward to building this amplifier and hopefully you guys can follow along um I have a little bit of experience building amplifiers over the years and um, hopefully for any of you guys out there who are perhaps um, beginners or a little bit earlier on in your amplifier building journey, this might be helpful. Anyway, thanks for watching this far. If you want to subscribe, go ahead. If not, click the thumbs up or thumbs down. Make some comments as you see fit. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.